I'm Charmin McDonald, and you're watching Fam TV. Big up to Fam TV. Continue to do the important work that you're doing. We have big things ahead. Think big, always think big, but make even bigger things happen in the right hands with Fam TV. Good evening, sisters and brothers. My name is Simba Hanley, and I'm I watch Fam TV. Lord of mercy, people in my ball for more Fam TV. You hear me now? This is Ross Bigley, Dub Scientist, and we are saying you're watching Fam TV. Do it, up full. What about the movie that just came out? Are they two different folks in the two different uh, films? In this movie, he is what you call the integrationist. His idea is ultimately, look, when he decides we're going to share our information of all the great things we have in Wakanda, did he call the African Union together? No. Did he go to Haiti? No. Did he call the African world together? No. Where did he go? UN. The UN. Because in the mind of the integrationist, if we can just work with these adversaries together, we can form some kind of bond that will work. Then there, and I'm not talking about the character, I'm talking about the political ideology. There's the other personality, the killmonger, that says, look, I have no interest. I I'll talk to him, but the minute you turn your back, I'm putting a hole in it. Right. And I'm galvanizing as many black people as I can. We will use everything we have to do for our own people in our own interest. Those are the two basic political philosophies of leadership. Here's the most important thing to understand. You don't even see them until we finally get consciousness and realize we're under assault. Right. So once we realize we're under assault, we have to know what the next part of the process is. People are gonna say we need to do something and it's gonna be two groups. The integrationists and the independence people. Those that we say want independence, during different periods of time in history, we give them different names. Pan-African, uh, black nationalist, African nationalist, freedom fighter, revolutionary, whatever you want to call it, it comes from someone who says we can do it for ourselves. Yes. Then we have the other group that we call all different kinds of things as well. Today we'll say the integrationist or the accommodationist or one that wants to work with those that are trying to destroy our people. Now I want to give an example, and I'm just going to show some examples because it begins to make it clear what we're talking about. When we normally hear about Pan-Africanism, we hear from an intellectual perspective. And I don't think that that's the best way for people today to understand it. No. Because we're not talking about a bunch of ideas and ideologies where we sit back. I'm not saying we don't have these dialogues, but I'm saying, what is it? Where are the ideas come from? This was Queen and Zynga. Most people don't know that what we have today called the CIA, the tactics that they used to infiltrate and disrupt, they stole it from her. Yes. Why? Because while black men in Africa, in her region, what they call Angola today, Matamba, or, or Ndongo at that time, while the men were busy fighting, trying to figure out who was going to work with the Portuguese, and who was going to work with the Dutch, and who was going to work with who, and fighting one another, her idea was, they're trying to enslave all of us. Why don't all of us just unite and push all of them out? And the men would not get it together, so she said, fine, I'll do it myself, because I have to. And the brothers who loved her so much would go to war with her against the Portuguese and the others. She was so sophisticated, she would train her best men, her best trained soldiers, tell them to go out and join the Portuguese forces. These brothers were well trained so they would rise to the highest ranks. And then when they would go and kidnap Africans and be walking them on the trail to the slave ship, upon her call at a moment's notice, her men would do a mutiny, kill all the white folks, take all the weapons, free all the black folks, say come back to our kingdom. Once you enter our land, you are no longer any of these groups, you are free African, come on. We're not making this up. This is a real African woman who got the point. We are Africans. Forget about the divisiveness. These are our enemies. We will fight them. We will win. And they could not ever take over her region and do enslavement while she was alive. She died in her, her 80s. Powerful black woman. <laughs> Queen of the So now I want to show, just so we can have an idea, if you keep Queen of Zinga in your mind of what the independence leader looks like, 
I want to compare and contrast the leaders that we've heard had throughout time. And I want to be clear on this. It's not comfortable to hear me say this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I know we all want to get, once you get conscious, we all want to love every black person. I'm just telling you the truth. The independence leader has always and will always has an enemy in the integrations. And here is what's so difficult for the independence person. The integrationist wants to work with other races. They love other races. Dr. John Henry Clark says they have a fascination with the color of the conqueror. But this is a magical part of it. And it makes it so difficult for the independence person. The integrationist hates the independence leader because the independence leader doesn't want to work with nobody but another African. But here's the problem. The independence person doesn't hate the integrationists because they're black. <laughs> so even though they don't agree with them, it's their brother or sister. So what happens is the independence leader is always in a position where they're trying to convince the integrationists that there's a better way. But the integrationists all in the back of their mind say, as soon as I get rid of you, I can convince all of our people that we can work with them. They're enemies. They're not friends. And we have got to get at least mature enough whichever side you choose to be on. I'm not telling you which side to be on. I don't pick my side. I'm going to tell you this. We got to stop pretending like they can get along. The independent minded actually is not just talking, but it's doing it. You cannot get along with the integrationists. You can fool yourself in thinking that they will throw you under the bus every chance they get. Because that is what's inside of them. And this is not something produced by the European. This is a tragic flaw in African people. They didn't make this. This is something that we had organically. I don't know where it came from, but it's the reality of what we're dealing with. So when we talk about Haiti, it's not enough to talk about Haiti without realizing they had the same issue. Toussaint Louverture, who was one of the greatest generals we ever produced. But this is the part that we don't like to talk about. His idea was this. I mean, he literally said, not verbatim, but pretty much he said, look, even if we got, quote unquote, independence and freedom, what would it mean if we didn't have the civilization of our white Frenchmen? So that he would, he would literally capture French troops and feed them and treat them better than he treated his own men. That was his philosophy, but he was a brilliant general. I don't want nothing from him now. But he did not want full, complete independence because he did not see the French as an enemy. He was a militant integrationist. In other words, if you will not accept me as an equal, I will chop your head off. And he would do it. But there's a problem. The moment that they say, well, maybe we'll accept you as an equal, he's ready to sit down at the table. Now there was another man. <laughs> His name was John Jacques Dessalé. He was a little bit different. Can I just tell you one or two stories about this guy so you can get a feel for him? John Jack Cecilene was very different. In fact, the way Toussaint would determine the victory of a battle is if they took the fort and it had good strategic position. Makes sense, right? That's what the general wants. You want a strategic position. That's not what Dessalene would do. Dessalene would come and say, we just had a battle. He would go get the report. How many men did we lose today? He would say 50 men. He said, ah, God. How many did we kill? Say 200. Great day for freedom fighting. <laughs> he said, all I want is the bodies. He said, they have two choices. They leave or they die. He said, it makes no difference to me. But we will be independent and free of them. And he said, once we get free of them, we won't only free ourselves physically. We don't want their clothes. We don't want their language. We don't want their ideas. We want to be Africans. In fact, not only did he do that, his plan, because once they won the war, and they won it with his personality, the independent African personality, he said, what are we gonna do? We gotta rebuild our forces because the young men, the people are hurt. But once they get healthy, they had already started working with people like Denmark Vesey. Y'all remember him? Yeah. Yeah. And what was their plan? People don't know this. David Walker, who's heard of the name David Walker? He wrote David Walker's Appeal. Yeah. Okay, that's what Nat Turner, the book Nat Turner read, Nat Turner escaped slavery. He read David Walker's appeal that said, we must go free ourselves, went back into slavery, and that's why he did the rebellion. Well, who did David Walker study with? He studied with Denmark Vesey, 
Who did Denmark Vesey go back and forth for like 20 years when he was enslaved? Back and forth to Haiti. What was the plan? Denmark Vesey's plan was they were gonna overthrow the slave masters in South Carolina, kill all the whites down to Florida, and then um, join with the Seminoles and invite an invading Haitian army in to liberate all of the black people in America. And Dessalines and the Haitians said, this is what we will do. Once you take the southern part of America, we will come in and we will free every black person on the continent of the United States of America. Are you hearing me? This is this personality. These men were of the same ilk. This is what David Walker talked about, just to show you how the influence of the Haitian Revolution sparked independent-minded black people around the world saying, we can do something for ourselves. He said, Haiti is the glory of the blacks and terror of the tyrants. I hope that she may be united, keeping a strict outlook for tyrants. For if they get the least chance to injure her, they will avail themselves of it. But one thing which gives me joy is that the Haitians are men who would be cut off to a man before they would yield to the combined forces of the whole world. In fact, if the whole world was combined against them, it could do nothing to them. To this very day, Haiti has the whole world, the United States of America, France, other regions in Europe, other African nations, other Caribbean nations, everybody trying to fight them and they're still holding on. What would happen if we were actually organized to help them? We go into it and we see this man who read David Walker's appeal had freed himself from slavery, was on his way to freedom, and said, you know what? What good is my freedom if the rest of my brothers and sisters are still in bondage? God has called me for work. He goes back into the teeth of slavery, gets four men together, and leads the rebellion that ultimately leads our people to freedom and independence in North America. Powerful men. But I want to show you this because it's very important. When we're talking about the independent African, this is very important to notice. The leaders that we generate, it's not 100%, the leaders that we generally will hear about and learn about are the integrations. This is the reason that we learn about the integrations. Because whatever adversary we're facing, the Asiatics, the Arabs, or the Europeans, they have much greater success negotiating terms with integrationists. And they want us to follow the ideas and the legacy of the integrationists because they haven't had as much success dealing with the independent mining Africans. So the only Africans that the whites will tell you about in Canada are the ones who they want you to emulate. But the reality of it is, the true Africans, who really are the ones that poke the most fear in them and got most of the changes that we were able to accomplish in this Western Hemisphere, and in Africa and everywhere else in the Caribbean, those are independent Africans who, if they do tell you anything about them, they demonize them so badly that even before you even hear them, you hate them and you don't want to hear nothing about them.